Hello YouTubers, welcome to another CPU Dan video. Today I'm going to be building a Pentium Pro system entirely out of spare parts that I've collected over the years. So right here, I'll be using a ECS P6FX1-A motherboard. This is a single processor motherboard. And I've got mounted one of my uh, Pentium Pro 1 meg versions in there. It's 200 megahertz. It's got 96 megs of RAM installed. And since this is going to be a gaming PC, you can't build one of those without an old school 3DFX Voodoo 2 video card. So I've got one of those for the build. Sound Blaster 16. Matrox G550 video card. Then I've got a USB uh, expandable PCI card. Then it's going to be a uh, Maxter 13 gigabyte hard drive. And then I'll be using that with the Promise Ultra 100 TX2 uh, controller on it since these are pretty outdated the controllers that are on here and then to house everything is this pretty nasty looking case but I'm hoping to fix that with a little bit of paint as you can see it's severely weathered kind of well it's just plain ugly looking but we're gonna take care of that I'm gonna paint it a nice aluminum color I've got some in the garage that I found and uh, I'll use that up on this so hopefully everything will look uh, pretty good once we get done with it but uh, let's go ahead and get started it's hard to ignore the size of the Pentium Pro processor. It's huge. Have you ever wondered why this CPU is so large? Well, it was the first time that a CPU manufacturer included its level 2 cache on the same substrate as the CPU. This level 2 cache required millions of additional transistors, which in turn required a much larger die size. Since the level 2 cache on a Pentium Pro is located on the CPU itself, it was able to use a 64-bit data bus versus the 32-bit bus found on a Pentium. This data bus is the link between the processor's level 1 cache and level 2 cache, and on the Pentium Pro, it ran at full processor speed. To put that in perspective, the level 2 cache from a 200MHz Pentium Pro could now talk to the processor's level 1 cache at 200MHz, while the level 2 cache from a 200MHz Pentium could only talk to the processor's level 1 cache at 66MHz. Maybe in another video, I'll go more in depth about the advantages the Pentium Pro had over the Pentium, and why it was a huge milestone for Intel. If you want me to do a video on that, make sure to hit that like button. In order for me to paint the components of the case, I had to completely tear the whole thing apart. So the front face plate, the top, and the side cover. So I've got all that torn apart, and I painted them. And this is what it, how it turned out. I think it turned out pretty well. It's supposed to be in a aluminum-like finish, but it looks more silver to me than aluminum. But I think it turned out pretty good. You gotta remember, I'm doing this with materials that I have in the house. I haven't bought anything. So with this silver type finish, combined with the black, I think it'll look pretty sharp. Give you a little, give you an idea what it'll look like. Yeah, I think that'll turn out pretty nice. So the next thing I have to do is just start putting everything together. So let's go ahead and do that.
much cleaner. Now I just got to put the lid back on it and then I'll install it in the computer. Well, here's the finished product. I think it turned out really well. The silver on the black looked great to me. Much better than that piss colored yellow that was on the front of this thing beforehand. But I did have to make a few configuration changes on it. One being the controller card. I had some problems with the controller card not recognizing hard drive, so I had to remove that and install this 4.3 gigabyte Fujitsu drive. This is the biggest drive that I had that this motherboard would recognize. And I couldn't find an updated BIOS anywhere on the internet for this motherboard. So this hard drive will have to make do until I can get another uh, controller card. But good news is while I was searching for this hard drive, I found this little gem. This is a TNT2 M64 32 meg PCI video card. This will be much faster than this S3 Verge GX2 that I was going to install beforehand. And not only that, it'll be kind of fun to compare the performance of the Voodoo 2 versus this TNT2 video card. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get Windows 98 installed on this guy and then we're going to start loading up some benchmarks. Before I start the benchmark, I wanted to point out that I have overclocked my Pentium Pro 1 meg version to 233 MHz, as shown by the CPU-Z printout here. I have also overclocked the TNT2 M64 video card. The engine is now running at 141.99 MHz and the memory at 171.82 MHz. This should make for some very interesting benchmark numbers. Let's go! Wow, I'm really surprised that the Voodoo 2 laid the smack down to the TNT2 M64 and 3D Mark 99. I would have never have guessed that. My guess is all that extra memory and higher core and memory clock from the TNT2 M64 was no match for the Voodoo 2's higher memory bandwidth. Now let's see how these two fare in Quake 3.
Well, that was no surprise after seeing the Voodoo 2 win against the TNT in 3D Mark. The Voodoo 2 was able to do 27.1 frames per second versus the TNT's 25 frames per second. I don't want to run too many benchmarks in this video, as I'm going to save that for another time, when I compare the Pentium versus the Pentium Pro. It'll be interesting to see how the Pentium Pro handles 16-bit applications compared to its little brother, the Pentium. Remember, the Pentium Pro is optimized for 32-bit applications at the expense of 16-bit performance, so I think this will make for a very interesting next video. So far I'm happy with my Pentium Pro build. The system performs really good for what it is, and I plan on keeping it in the collection for many years to come. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button. If you have any suggestions, make sure to leave them below. So long.